Hello, this is Gernge with another quick tip video. Today we'll be covering how to make TVs or other screens, such as computer monitors or other digital displays. There are some differences in how we can approach this in Redshift, like whether to use a material with a mission or an area light. So let's get started. I have staged this demo scene with an older CRT style monitor and then also a newer flat screen computer monitor. So let's begin comparing and contrasting by taking a look at the monitor. So we can see we have some geometry, but for the most part, it is just a flat screen. And we have our emissive material, which is what our screen is, applied directly to this screen. So from a geometry standpoint, this is the more straightforward type of screen to set up. We can see I have my image texture here, which is in the base color of a color layer. And then there is an LCD sub pixel map in the color layer as well as an overlay blending mode. But for the most part, it's just a standard redshift material. We have a high amount of emission, which is what's giving us all of our brightness. We can, of course, lower this, but I think for my scene, a value of 10 looked quite nice. It's worth noting if you want a bit of a reflective look, depending on what else is in your scene. So we have re both reflection and coding right here, helping contribute to this glossy look. All right, to move on over here, we have the CRT screen. You can do a deep dive on how these things work in the real world, but I build them with a glass front panel. Pausing the render view and soloing this piece of glass, we can see that there's thickness on this side and on this side. And then in the glass material, it is important when building it this way with thickness, you do not use the thin walled checkbox on the material. So behind the glass, we have the area light, which is what our material is applied to. Now, if you've never applied a material to a light before, you select your area light and then you can click add graph right here. I mean, this will just refresh and completely blow out the scene right now, but I'm just gonna make sure to replace it with the one that I have set up for mine. So inside of this material, this is where we have our texture, another sub pixel map blending together in a color layer and that connects to the light material. And this is where we control our intensity and other important light parameters. For animated textures, you're free to make whatever you want, whether that's making graphics by hand or combining other assets. I'll just be converting an animation I've already made into an image sequence. We click over to the animation tab and I'll try loop. Make sure I do 24 frames per second because that's what I prefer to work in. And then we detect frames. I rendered out from zero to 240, which is correct. Now, if you find yourself needing to mess with this start offset value, it can be a bit tricky and I tend to avoid it. If I'm working in a 240 frame shot, I like having all 240 frames in my texture. So clicking through some of the frames here, we can see both of our materials are animating nicely. So you might be asking which route to go and it's going to depend entirely on the type of screen or device that you have in your scene. One bonus of the area light method, which again is the CRT screen on the left here, is that it can contribute to the environment volumetrics, which I tend to use a lot. So we have our area light. If we adjust its brightness, that it will shine up and sort of illuminate some of this area in front of it. And that is because in the details tab, I have the volume set over here. But if we bump that up a bit, we can definitely see the effect that this is having in the scene. Now the downside to this though is you don't really get a representation of what the texture looks like in the viewport with the light as opposed to the monitor over here which is just a normal material on a piece of geometry. So one thing I glossed over earlier in this tutorial is pixels or rather sub pixels to be technical. So getting in close to the CRT screen we see that we have this arrangement of red, blue, and green dots. And over here on the monitor, we also have a similar arrangement, but they're more like lines. These are what make up each pixel on a real screen. To find an example like this, you can search them up on Google Images, adding in the word subpixel or subpixel map to your search result. There really are a huge variety of these. They come in all sorts of patterns and arrangements. So with one of them downloaded and brought into our shader, let's solo it and take a look. You can see that I have the texture scale raised up very, very high. Now this is probably not high enough to be realistic for a nice quality screen, but lowering this, we can start to get a sense for what effect it's having. Again, looking back through the material in the color layer, we can see we are just overlaying. Now the lower you go, the worse resolution it will appear. 
it's subtle, and I'm not sure in the render if it will come through, but we see a bit of that moraying pattern or the artifacts that you see when you film a TV screen, which I quite like. So just to finish things up, if you want to take things a little bit further, and if it makes sense in your particular scene, in the screen that you're working with, maybe add some surface imperfections. They could look nice. Jumping back to the CRT screen, sometimes I like to include an image texture of a cracked window. This might not be the most realistic thing to add, but I quite like the image on screen reflecting and refracting through the crack on the glass. So I think that'll about wrap things up for this quick tip video covering CRT screens and other computer monitors. I hope this information helps you out, and if you make a cool render with this effect, please let me know. I'd love to see the result. And also, if you found the information useful, please consider liking the video or sharing it, perhaps. And thank you so much for watching.